Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Galatians chapter 2. Continuing with the, the history, Paul. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. So he comes back to the apostles and he's, he's preaching to the Gentiles. He's telling them. Because remember when he came back to Jerusalem, there was, well, you know, there are Jews that are trying to put the Gentiles under the law again. And then they had the council and they'd say, you know, abstain from things strangled, no fornication. And it was something else. I forget what it was. See, there was this big debate. Law versus the Gentiles. And Paul... And circumcision kept coming up. And Paul came back and said, listen, this is this is what I'm preaching. And you guarantee that they'll be looking at him like, Paul, what's going on? Remember, Paul had that special revelation, verse 12. As much as John came back with his revelation... You know, the book of, we call Revelation. Wow, that's weird. Because remember, the, the Jews were still on, kind of still in the law, but not in the law no more. And we're going to see that now in Galatians chapter 2. It looks like the Galatians, they're being, they're being put back under the law. We're trying to. Well, let's read on. I preach among the Gentiles, but private, privately to them... When we, uh, which were of reputation, least by any means I should run, or had run, in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. That's, you know, that shows out through the whole Bible, the circumcision. And that because of false brethren, false brethren, they think they're brethren, but they're not brethren, unawares brought in. So they came in into the group of Christians, but they're false. Who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we had in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So here comes that circumcision deal again. And these false brethren come, oh, you know, they need to be circumcised because that was the covenant to Abraham. Yes, that was the covenant to Abraham, but we're not under that covenant no more during the church age. We're under Jesus Christ. Surgical procedures of anything is not going to get you saved. And I guarantee the Pharisees that gave Jesus the hard time, the high priest that turned Jesus over to Roman government, and had the people and themselves cried, crucify him, crucify him. I guarantee they were circumcised. And they're not going to go to heaven or to the new earth. They're, they're in hell. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So, no matter what, besides the, these false brethren, we're getting the gospel out, but we got opposition. And we saw that in the book of Acts. We saw the Jews come in, you know, you know, this circumcision, this other stuff, 
And they come, well, what baptism have you been baptism of? Oh, John's baptism. Then we have to take them off to the side and show them more, uh, more, uh, I forget what the word is, but have to show them more rightly what what the new ways are for after Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. But of these who seem to be somewhat, who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's birth. You know, these people, these, these false brothers, you know, they think they're somebody. I don't care, Paul's saying. God does not respect anybody. We're all sinners. And if we're saved, it's only respect, only, the only thing we get of a title is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. For they who seem to be somewhat in confidence added nothing to me. So these false brethren, you know, there was no help for Paul. There was no edification for Paul. They're this there causing trouble and problems. And they're going to be there in your ministry no matter what. Whether they cry peace, peace, peace. Or the spaghetti monster, whatever. Whatever they're going to come up to. You're going to have them in your ministry. You're going to have somebody who's going to be trying to destroy your work. That's. But counterwise. Op opposed to that. When they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So here's a division. Paul is to the Gentiles. Peter's still preaching. He is still to the Jews. Well, that's kind of interesting because if Paul said that, what do you think First and Second Peter's written to? What's it say? The Jews. So what books would you find to Gentiles that get saved? The Pauline epistles. When you find first and second Peter, what's what's Paul say? Circumcision. Yeah, Peter had those keys to the Jews, Acts chapter two. He had the keys to the Gentiles in Acts chapter ten, but Paul was taken to go to Asia, and to, yes, the Jews, and to the Gentiles. Right there. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Well, who gave Peter that power? Jesus Christ. Who gave Paul the, the, the power? Jesus Christ. They're not two different men. They just got two different groups of people. And when James, Cephas, there's Peter. And it's funny because the Catholic Church will raise up Peter, 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 Pumpkin Neater, Simon Peter. Uh, there, his name is given as Cephas. I'm just trying to think of a couple other things with Peter. Um, Simon Says, that's what I'm trying to think of. Why does that game have to have a name of of a pope, Simon says. You ever wonder that? Peter, pumpkin eater, whatever that is. And John. James, Cephas, and John. Those are the three that, weren't those the three main ones that traveled with Jesus? And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, pre perceived that Perceive the grace that was given unto me. So here's these three men that traveled with Jesus and they're looking at Paul. The grace was to me, they gave, uh, was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. All right, men, we see you're of God. We see what the Lord's done with you. We send you out. That we would go into the heathen. And they unto the circumcision. Uh oh. Uh oh. James and John goes to the Gentiles with Peter. Paul and Barnabas and Titus and Timothy are going to the Gentiles. There's a split. 
Imagine that. A split. Oh, my church split. <laughs> Here's a split among, the, among the, the apostles of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going different ways. But this is a good split. Sometimes a church split is a good split. Because it, it, it builds a church somewhere else. And if they're getting the word of God out, why complain? Only they would that we should remember the poor. And uh, remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. And think of the poor. You notice how the Democrats take that out of context. Remember the poor, feed the poor, take care of the poor. But you forgot about the gospel first. People will take care of the poor, but they will forget about the gospel. They need the gospel. But when Peter, now watch this one. When Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to face because he was to be blamed. Uh oh. Can I say this in tongue in cheek? The Pope John, the Pope Paul is going to yell at the Pope Peter because Pope Peter is wrong. But let's look at it like this: Peter, Peter's in trouble again, and he's going to get rebuked again. And Paul's going to do it this time. Let's see what kind of character Paul is. Remember, remember we, we studied first and second Corinthians. Oh, if I show up there, remember what he said, you know? These people are sitting in the church. Let's see what Paul would do in that pulpit. What we talked about. Go back and study first and second Corinthians as our family. And see Paul. But he says, I when I show up, I'm going to bring a rod. I'm going to be straightforward. Watch this. For being, excuse me, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Okay, he sits down with a bunch of Gentiles. For a Jew, that's bad. Go ask Jonah. Acts chapter 10, the Holy Spirit tells Peter, I want you to go to those Gentiles. Uh, in the vision, I'm not going to be eating that. I'm, the law says I can't touch that stuff, God. I won't. And Peter again is telling God what he should do as God. And disobeying God. But now here Peter. Look at this. Peter is changed. He's sitting down with the Gentiles. Man he's having crab. He's having lobster. He's having pork. He's having sausages. Look at that. Isn't that great? Mm, I love this stuff. You would never think Peter would do that. Would you? But there he is. He's eating with the Gentiles. Grace is good to Peter. But when they were come, who? The Jews. When the Jews came, he withdrew and separated himself. So he's sitting down with the Gentiles. He's having a meal with them, whatever meal, I don't know. Here comes the Jews, who, I don't know. He gets up. Well, somebody, somebody was a Jew. He gets up and he leaves. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. So they're Jews. We know that. So Peter's like, uh-oh. Can't catch me with these Gentiles. And grabs a, sl a slide of, of ribs and, you know, walks off and is eating them. I don't know. So he is in fellowship with people that the Jews are against. And they come. And Peter takes off. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. So every Jew at that table was sitting down with the Gentiles, got up and followed him. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with the dissimulation. They disassembled themselves. So Peter's kind of putting on airs. These Jews show up, he, he's afraid of what they're going to think. They think they were going to do. And, they, 
and now all of a sudden at this table is just Gentiles like where did they go? Wasn't Peter just having fellowship with us? He was just eating. Where did he go? How come the rest of the Jews left? And he left a big, what happened here? But when I saw that they walked not worthy according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, all right, you take what we're going to learn right now, this, this verse, and you take what Paul's going to walk in, in the Corinthian church. Before all, if thou being a Jew, liveth after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Man, he balled them out right there in front of anybody. You're compelling the Gentiles to be as Jews. But Peter, your conduct is, you're doing right, but when the Jews came, you took off. That's not right. So Paul called them face to face on his sin. He left those Gentiles sitting there at the table or whatever, or among the assembly. What happened? You mean to tell me you're going to leave us as assembly just because of other Jews? That's not right. You should have kept them together. Who cares what the other Jews think? They don't want to think right? Then those that do do right, you stay with them. You tell those who don't want to do right, see you later. And that's what happens with families today. There are families that go have fellowship with those that don't love Jesus Christ and then leave Jesus. They don't come back to church, you know, the following Sunday night for the family thing. And Paul said that's wrong. We, all right, now we're going to get to the Jewish thing. And we'll say, what's this big deal about the Jews showing all this and that? Remember back in Acts, the biggest problem is, do we put the Gentiles under the, under the law? These Gentiles that, that are right now in this chapter we're reading about, they're not under the law, but they're trying to put them under the law. And not being under the law, here comes men who are under the law doing the law and they would look at Peter like you're violating the law by just being with those people and Peter's like no 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 okay I can't make it look like that instead of turning these Gentiles over and say hey listen there's no difference between Jew and Gentile no more that sheep dream a vision he had from God we're all going to the same place we're going to glory by Jesus Christ but he separated these Gentiles because of the law. I know it's hard It's hard to explain. We who are Jews by nature, okay? That's, that's Peter and Paul's nature. They're, and not sinners of the Gentiles. Remember those wicked, bad, awful Gentiles. Ew. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, Peter... Don't put them under the law, Peter. But by faith of Jesus Christ. Did they have faith that you were sitting with those Gentiles? If they had faith, they're your company. We're one. Those that have not, who are still under the law, they're not one with us, Peter. Why did you leave the saved for the lost? Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. We have believed in Jesus Christ. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not law, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now you put these guys who have believed in Jesus Christ for salvation, you put them in a little awkward spot that you left them for people who are under the law. Because they would judge you unworthy, them being under the law. That's wrong. Those Gentiles did more right than those Jews if they had followed all the law. Because if you followed all the law, that's not going to justify you. That's been done away with. The only one that fulfilled the whole law is Jesus Christ. 
and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you can't walk up to God and say, I kept the ten. You can't say to God, I done what this, anything but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's not going to justify you. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. I mean, Christ, the only sin that he has when he took on our sin, he was sinless. And Christ is not going to minister sin. We are justified by Christ. But in the law, we are found sinners. The law said before I was saved, I'm a sinner. Okay, we're after I'm saved, after I have the justification, after I am right with God, I'm still a sinner. And when I go through Genesis to Revelation, I read the Bible, starting by, oh, yeah, okay, I, yep, I still do that. Oh, I had no idea that was a sin. Because I'm saved, does that mean I don't sin? Absolutely not. Every time I read that law, I had to confess 1 John 1, 9. Hey, I've sinned. My only justification is Jesus Christ and finished work. I'm not saved by the law, but the law reveals who I am. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself, I make myself a transgressor. So this thing with the law, don't build it back upon it. Don't bring it back. Don't rekindle it as a mode of salvation. And I think that's what's going on in the Galatian church. I think they're bringing back the law. For I, though the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto, unto God. The law makes me dead. The wages of sin is death. But what is the rest of that verse that's written to Christians? The gift of God's eternal life to Jesus Christ, our Lord. If I rely completely on the law, I'm dead. I have no hope. But if I go continue with, with Romans 6.23, but the gift of God's eternal life. My eternal life is not in the law. It's in what Jesus Christ. So... With Gentiles, why are you putting them under the law when the law is making them dead? And they got life through Jesus Christ. What are you guys doing? And it's circumcision. That, I'm trying to think of how to be clean. In the church age, you're not going to stand before God and God's going to say, drop your drawers. And he's going to check to see if there's a surgery for salvation. No, he's going to check and see if there's blood, with the blood of Jesus Christ for salvation. And you say, well, why say Because that's what's going on in the book of Acts. They were compelling the Gentiles to be circumcised. I mean, the law stated if, if they wanted to come into the congregation, they wanted to have fellowship at the temple and fellowship in the land and be, they had to be circumcised that was spoken by to Abraham but not today and there's a big ordeal where people try to put you under law for salvation you do something no doing something outside believing on the finished work of Jesus Christ cannot and will not ever be salvation and this practice is going on in the early church. Now those Gentiles, let's get them under the law. No. See, Peter, James, and John have come out from a transition. They've gone from the law to Jesus Christ. Remember, before they came to Jesus Christ, Peter, James, and John were under the law. They had to leave the Galilee River three to uh, see three times a year and go to Jerusalem and go back. 
They had to do all that. They had to do everything the law told them to do. Then Jesus came. They became part of the ministry. Whatever that thing Jesus, whatever that time frame of Jesus' ministry, I have no idea. Because he came to fulfill the law. Jesus said that the law and the prophets were unto John the Baptist. So from John the Baptist to the resurrected Christ, I don't know. But when the apostles Peter, James, and John come out of Acts chapter 1, the resurrected Christ going to Jesus Christ, they are still not no longer under the law. We have a resurrected Christ. And when Peter gets up and preaches in Acts chapter 2, you have a weird kind of salvation to Jewish people only. Repent and be baptized, as the water dogs would say. That is not, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a lot different from Acts 16, with Paul preaching. And then chapter 3 or 4 is it, Peter again, it now it's not being baptized, it's believing on Jesus Christ. And then you get to Acts, you get to Acts chapter 9 with Philip. Here's this Ethiopian eunuch, a Gentile. He, he's traveling, he's got Isaiah 53, he's reading it. And P Philip comes up to him and preaches to him Jesus. And Philip comes, they come to a bottle of water, a body of water, and the Ethiopian eunuch said, What must I do to be baptized? Thinking John's baptism. Philip says, no, 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 no. I ain't going to baptize you until you know it's Jesus Christ. He says, well, Jesus Christ is my Savior. I'm not quoting these verses completely. And knowing that Jesus Christ, he has put his faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Philip puts him under the water. We come a long way from Acts chapter 2. Now here's a colored man, African, getting saved. Peter has a dream up on a housetop. It's involved the law. All these four-footed, all these weird creatures, and God says, rise up, Peter, and eat. No, oh, no, God, not me. I'm clean. I obey that law. It happened a second time. It happened a third time. Knock at the door. We're looking for Peter. We want you to come to, to Caesarea, to Cornelius. And the Holy Spirit says, you better go with him. And he walks in that Gentile's house just as much as Jonah walked into that city. Like, oh, I don't want to be here. And he gets up and preaches a message to him. And he says, you know what? God is not in you know, for the Jews only. And I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not quoting this verbatim. But now I see to the Gentiles and something even worse for the Jews happened. Now the Gentiles are doing signs. So Peter and his company will say, Something's happening here. The Gentiles are now receiving the Holy Spirit. So he gets back. Now, let's go back here where we are now. He gets back to Jerusalem. I've got the joy, joy down in my heart. The Gentiles are getting saved. And we read in chapter 11. Now, those are very apostles, James and all them. They contend with Peter about what you do going over there. What on earth are you doing with those Gentiles? So we see Peter here, that's exactly what he's afraid of. He's going to get a balling out again because he's with those Gentiles. And here comes unsaved people under the law. So here comes Paul now. Paul in Acts chapter 9, before, I mean, he's on the road to Maccus, Christ, you know, he's on the ground, he repents, gets right, and he gets baptized, and he's preaching Jesus Christ out of the Old Testament. They lower him down to the wall. He disappears. He goes off to Arabia. He shows back up. He comes to the apostles and says, listen, I've got this revelation. I've got this gospel. He goes out in the mission field. He has to come back to Jerusalem. we got a problem here. Who is telling these Gentiles to get circumcised? What, what, what's the problem here? We're not under law, guys. And they had to have a big council meeting with James to the head. All right, we got to come down with three rules the fornication, the things strangled from blood, and I forget what the third one is. Now, everybody in Jerusalem, all the apostles know no more law. 
We're under grace. It took a little while for that to happen. And they go still go out. Here's one guy. He's out there preaching John's baptism. Aquila and Priscilla took this guy off to the side and said, hey, we got to expound the gospel more, more clearly to you. That guy's name is Paulus, and look what he's done. Then you go out, there's three guys who got saved, and what baptism were you of? John's baptism. And they haven't received the Holy Spirit yet, as we do. So this law and grace thing has been trouble through the book of Acts. It's trouble today because they'll still try to put you under the law. Some people will. You must go into this booth and speak to your priest. You, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, you can't honor flag, you can't get blood, you can't serve in the military. You can't have electronic radio, you gotta ride a horse and buggy, and you gotta, you know, help your farm, help your neighbor build his barn and all that, and you gotta meet over here in this state, and you gotta do this, you gotta get cross leg. you can only eat vegetables, you can't eat this, you can't do that, you have to do this, you have to do that, you, that's law, that's work, that's not salvation, and that's 2017 still. Every religion's got their, their form of works. But Christians, what is my work of salvation? Christ dying on that cross, being buried, and God raised him from the third day. That's my salvation. Now, what are my works? After I'm saved, I do things to show the love that God showed the love to me. I'm commanded to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Now, God has given me one special voice to do it a certain way. Not everybody is to preach on the streets. And that work of preaching on the streets, God will judge me at the judgment seat of Christ for crowns and rewards. And it says, the fire will try to work, but not me. I'm saved. If I gave up preaching on the street right now, and God said, you know, you still preach on the street, that's it. And I gave it up, it would be a loss. We're going back to putting people under the law, and that's not right. And Paul rebukes. He says, puts a, puts, a, puts a stop on it. I am crucified with Christ. I die with Christ. When you're nailed to a cross, you do not have the option of touching things. You can't. You don't have the option of walking anywhere. You can't. Because you're nailed. And you die. I live. Nevertheless, I live. Well, that's a remarkable statement. I'm crucified, but I live. The flesh is nailed to the cross, but you're Christ. You being that new nature, that new man liveth. At least it's supposed to be. A lot of times this flesh will rip itself off the cross in all pain to go get something it's not supposed to have. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And there's the hymn. Imagine. And maybe I'm the sticker when it comes to hymns and all that. I, I never did like them. Imagine you're saying, all right, let's sing 225 or whatever. Christ now liveth in me. Imagine a Christian who's worldly, who doesn't do nothing he's supposed to do to the Bible. Get up, Christ liveth in me. And then you go to the judgment seat of Christ as a liar. Be careful what you think. If you're not doing what that hymn is, is, is singing for you're supposed to be doing, Sweet hour of prayer, and I haven't prayed once this week. You better be careful. Because you'll stand at the, at the judgment seat of Christ as a liar. Is not every word being recorded? Will we not give account for every idle word? Well, what about singing a hymn that we don't do? Careful. Many churches with hymns are put in their own congregation to be liars at the judgment seat of Christ. That's how it, you don't like it, that's tough. It's just... Christ liveth in me, and you're a worldly Christian. Well, if you say that, you're a liar. So, in life which I now live, in the flesh, 
in the life which I now live in the flesh, you're supposed to, that's supposed to be nailed to the cross. You're supposed to give your all, your all, your living to Christ. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So you got to walk, you got to talk, you got to touch, you got the feelings. Give them to God now. Don't give them to self. Be careful what your eyes see. Be careful what you smell. Be careful what you hear. Be careful where you go. Be careful what you touch. Give it to God. Who loved me. Who loved me. For God so loved the world. There it is. Who loved me. That's past tense. And the past tense of that one is that love was shown at Calvary's cross. It continues. But that one particular spot, it's almost like that you and your wife, the first place you met, the first place you fell in love. The first place I met Christ. There he loved me. And gave himself for me. For God so loved the world. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm missing something here. Let's, I am crucified with Christ, Jesus. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ, Jesus, liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who is the Son of God, Jesus, who loveth me, and gave himself for me, It's Jesus Christ. No other. No other. And we just read about the Galatians were in another gospel. What good news? It's not the good news that Jesus loved them. It's not the good news that he gave himself for them. Because there's a gospel right there. He loved me and he gave himself for me. Death, burial, resurrection. There it is. I do not frustrate the grace of God. So, if you want to frustrate the grace of God, you preach anything other than the death and burial and resurrection. Anything other than that, you frustrate the grace. Because there is no grace. For if righteousness come by the law... That's frustrating the grace of God. If you say righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So you got to either have the law or Jesus Christ. You can't have both for salvation means. And we've seen over and over Paul saying the law can't do it. Now the law is good. Uh, it's not going to happen. Well, I don't know. Maybe not going to happen. I'm all for you put that Ten Commandments right there. Where the defendant's got to stand before the courtroom. Right there. Where he stands. He's got to see the Ten Commandments before he looks at that judge. Because the Ten Commandments will say, you're guilty. And that's not going to save him. If that guy said, Your Honor, I shall love the God with all my heart. I shall not make any images bow down. I shall honor the Sabbath day. I honor that month. That's not going to save the guy. But if he said, Your Honor, says thou shalt not steal. Your Honor, I'm guilty. I stole. Now the judge can say, All right. The law has made you acknowledge your sin. How do you plead? I'm, I'm guilty. Now can come the pardon. So you come to Jesus with the law and say, hey, I'm guilty, Jesus. I need you, the great judge of all the earth. I need you to save my soul and put my sins under the blood, under your blood. And then the judge will say, hey, that's it. You're saved. You're pardoned. You're gone. I give you eternal life. 
But you can't walk up to Jesus and start reading the Ten Commandments and think, all right, fine, enter. No, that's not going to happen. That Ten Commandments is a roadmap. The law is a roadmap to show that you're guilty. And you come to Jesus Christ, the judge, being guilty, and you seek that pardon. You can only get a pardon if you're guilty. Evidently, we didn't have a president and a running mate for president office to realize what pardon meant. I was shown in the Bible when I was saved that I'm guilty. I'm a sinner. I pleaded guilty. You can't have someone come up to God and say, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, if you're never guilty. And I've dealt with men in prison. Oh, I'm not guilty of sin. Are you saved? Yeah. And are you a sinner? No. You need to read the law. So what's going on here is with with the with the chapter two, the subject of the law is and chapter one saying that there's another gospel that they've soon turned away from Jesus Christ. It looks like somebody's crept into the church and they're trying to bring law. Paul brings back a memory, a testimony, how he received the gospel. He brings back the testimony in the book of Acts, how I've dealt with this situation before. I've dealt with Jews trying to put the Gentiles under law. I've dealt with it. Even one of the apostles I had to rebuke. He's telling the church of Galatian or the Galatians, hey, I've dealt with it. Don't fight with me on it. I call this a file cabinet, a file in my file cabinet of life. Paul can open up that file cabinet and say, okay, law and Gentiles, here it is. Acts chapter... <laughs> I got a degree in this. I've already dealt with this. You're not going to mess with me. You're not going to tell me because I've dealt with this with James, Peter, and John. Now, you guys need to listen to me because Jesus Christ is the one that told me this gospel. He's the one that, that gave me the revelation. Now, if you want to do right, you better listen to me. Peter did. James did. John did. So... Quite interesting how the law keeps showing back up.